Hey guys, how are ya? So, a question I get put to me very often is what is the best way to learn code? You have three basic options. Go to college, do a boot camp, or solo learn on your own with video courses, books, or maybe online uh, text-based courses. There's many options out there. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of each of them so you can decide what is best for you because everybody's different. As my Chinese doctor, Dr. Yu from Beijing told me many, many years ago, actually a few decades ago, when he cured me of my blood disease, he said, Stefan, not everybody can eat peanuts. Some people are allergic to peanuts. So everybody is different. Some people are allergic to peanuts, some people aren't. Same thing with learning to code. Some people will prefer college, some will prefer boot camp, some will prefer solo learning. Anyway, let's just jump into it. All right, so let's start with college. So college, the pros, is that you get to party a lot in college. That's very important. Number two, uh, when you complete your degree, you will uh, have a degree. And in some companies, the degree is important. It opens up doors, but experience is more important. That being said, the degree cannot be discounted and um, you get some guidance, you get some support by, from the teachers and from other students around you. And very importantly, I should mention again, you get to party a lot. All right, so what are the cons of college? First of all, you're gonna have three to four years of your life. There's gonna be cost to that for many people. If there's no cost, then you can forget this cost. But a lot of people, there's a cost. So you have to consider that. Let's say in the US, it's minimum 10,000 bucks a year. Minimum 10,000 bucks a year. Why is it minimum $10,000 a year? It's minimum $10,000 a year because you not only have to pay for the school, you gotta pay for the books, but you also gotta pay for room and board, right? These are years that you're spending and not earning. Keep that in mind, there's a further point coming out of this. Another con, and I hear this from a lot of people, is that the curriculum, what you are being taught Oftentimes, there could be a lot of stuff in there that is out of touch with current industry trends. Uh, they, I hear some stuff that I hear from people who post under my YouTube videos, say, yeah, my professor said this, that, and the other thing, and this guy, this professor, clearly, this particular professor anyway, clearly has not been in industry. I don't know how prevalent that is. I leave that to you to decide, but you have a bit of that as well. Oftentimes, a lot of people who go to college will be taking courses on the side uh, to supplement what they're doing in college. Keep in mind, when you do go to college, not like high school where you're spoon-fed everything. Oftentimes, not oftentimes, when you do go to college, the teachers and the professors present to you what you need to learn, but it's really you have to be self-motivated made to learn on your own to a great extent with some pointers here and there. That's just normal because guess what? In the development world, you're gonna learn, you have to learn to learn on your own because that's a big part of being a developer. All right, option number two, boot camp. So a boot camp is a private training. Uh, well, it's a boot camp where you spend, you could spend like three months or six months or whatever it is at a boot camp where they usually train you really hard every day. They'll say, yeah, you gotta do six hours a day or eight hours a day, which I'm against, by the way. And uh, I've talked about this in other videos, too much. Three to four hours of intense learning per day is max you should do, because if you understand the brain and how our brains actually acquire new knowledge, that's what you, that's the optimal. Beyond that, you're just wasting your time. Pros with the boot camp is that it's fast. You don't have to spend three, four years like you do in college. You can typically get something done within six months or a little bit more. It's gonna be less expensive in college because in college, if you're three, four years, 10,000 a year, 30, 40,000 a year, is probably a minimum, at least in North America. Um, but you also have to count when you're spending three to four years in college, those are three, three to four years where you're not making money as a developer. You're not making money. We call this in business opportunity cost. So college not only has a cost in terms of the actual cost of college, paying for the courses and the books and the room and board, but there's also the opportunity cost, meaning those four years of learning and partying a lot can't discount the importance of the partying in college. Those three, four years you're not earning, you're losing. So with a boot camp, in theory, you should be able to get a job within a year as opposed to, have to having to be in school for three to four years. Now, even if you got an entry-level job, let's do some mathematics here. So let's say you do an entry-level job, you get an entry-level job after a boot camp. 
So six months in, six months, boom. So the first, it was say entry level, you start off low level. You're an average person, fine. Start off 20 bucks the hour, 40,000 a year. So the first year, for the sake of argument, you're making 40 grand. Meanwhile, your buddy who went to college, he's spending at least 10 grand. He's probably spending more like 20 grand a year when you consider food and everything. So he's down 20 grand the first year, you're up 40 grand. So that means the spread between what he, he's under or he or she is under versus you, you're not only up 40, you're also up to 20 grand or 30 grand that this person spent to go to college. So you're actually up 70 grand in one year. Second year, because you worked in your first year, and you developed skills, you moved out of total noob coder into something a little bit more advanced, all of a sudden now paying you the equivalent of 60,000 a year. Now remember, I'm using, I'm basing these numbers, rough numbers on, if you go to indeed.com, the average starting developer is like 90 grand. So I'm, I'm actually lowballing this, right? But anyway, second year, your buddy's still paying whatever, we'll say 20,000 a year to go to college, food, board, food, you know, uh, college costs, et cetera, rent. You though, are now making 70,000 a year. What did I say, 60, whatever. You're making 70,000 a year. This is below the average, by the way, as a second year developer. So now you're making 70,000 that, that first year, but you're not paying for college, whereas your friend is paying 20 grand for college and room and board. So now you're up uh, 90,000 versus your friend. So in the first two years, you're up well over like almost 130,000, something like that, rough numbers, but you get the idea. Then the third year is even bigger. Third year, you get up to 90,000 a year as a developer. He's still in college, your buddy. He's partying, partying, partying a lot, eating ramen noodles, but he's still, you know, he's still in college. So again, he's down another 20, but now you're up a 90 more. Now the fourth year, he's getting out of college. Fantastic. Now you're up 100,000 a year. And he's, again, he's down another 20 grand. Anyway, you see the, you see the pattern here. You know, the more years he spends in college, the more money you're making. By the time your buddy gets the job, you will be ahead of them by like 300,000 or so, depending, depending, you know, maybe 250, 300 grand. We'll say 250. Now, he's gonna come in, not a higher salary than you. Actually, you're gonna be higher salary than him. It will take him a couple of years to catch up to you. If you save and invest properly, your buddy will never be able to catch up to you in terms of earnings, because you're gonna already be ahead of them. Unless you do something silly, go out and buy a Porsche 911 uh, in year three. But anyway, so there you go. Um, the boot camp will save you a lot of time. It will get you there pretty quick, and it will, uh, and you can get a pretty good job depending on the type of training. So next, so what are the cons of the boot camp? Well, the cons are rigid schedule. Typically, they put you on a rigid schedule. Everybody's gotta finish JavaScript by December 31st, and then you gotta start Python. Or uh, they say, you gotta be here every day from, uh, you know, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. What happens if you have a full-time job? What happens if you're a mother and you have kids to take care of? Well, you know, who knows? It's rigid. The schedule is rigid, not only in terms of when you have to study certain subjects, but it's also rigid in terms of uh, your days. You may not be able to do the boot camp uh, situation. So, depending on the boot camp. Now, in full disclosure, I have a mentoring program which circumvents all that. You work at your pace, you work when you want. I recommend no more than three hours a day, as little as 20 minutes a day. And whether you finish it in two months or six months, that's up to you, doesn't matter. Another thing about the boot camps, and I've heard this often enough, so I don't know how prevalent it is, but there's a lot of questionability. There's a lot to question in terms of the quality of the teaching there. Most people who teach code don't know how to teach, I can tell you that. And number two, um, a lot of the teachers were recent graduates from the boot camp just uh, six months before. So that's something question about that. When you're looking for a good teacher, the teacher should have real world experience in the industry, hopefully many years, and they should have teaching ability. Hopefully they've worked in education or at least studied education and have some talent for teaching. Teaching, like so many other skills, is a talent. Some people can teach, some people can't. 
So you gotta look for that. So there can be some questionable, uh, there's some be question about the quality of what you're getting from the boot camp. Oftentimes a boot camp will also jump on the latest, hottest tech. So you learn the latest, hottest, cutting edge tech, insert whatever that is today. And then what happens, I've heard this from many students, they go out to get a job and they realize all the jobs are in the old stuff. All right, let's go with number three, solo learn, solo learning. You learn on your own. So what are the pros? It's cheap as it gets. You can just use free online tutorials on YouTube. You can get uh, lots of documentation online. You can, uh, you can maybe get cheap courses for 10, 30 bucks, et cetera, et cetera. Well, maximum flexibility. You learn when you want. That's it. No problem there. Um, yeah, so those are the big advantages of solo learning. But there's a lot of pros. There are a lot of cons, rather. The cons are you have no support. Why do you run into it? You have no guidance. What do you learn? What's the best thing to learn? What order do you learn things? I don't know. Uh, you're on your own. You're on your own, which can be a good thing in a way where as you become a pro developer, you're gonna to have to be able to learn on your own. That's a big part of the job. Figuring out, okay, here's my situation here. This is the problem I gotta solve for the business. I'll go find what technologies I need to implement to make that problem, to solve that problem. So oftentimes as a pro developer, especially in the freelance space, but oftentimes as a pro developer, you're gonna to have to be learning new things on the fly as I did. Now, when I was learning how to code back in 94, I first started coding, I was learning on my own because I had my business, so I would just uh, buy a book on HTML and learn it, then buy a book on JavaScript, and buy a book on uh, Perl, and then buy a book on Java and PHP. And just over time, uh, I was able to learn this stuff, but I did have mentors. I did have mentors. I had mentors in coding, I had mentors in business and processes, and I was also a very studious type of dude. So um, it worked for me. But I thank God for the mentors. Mentors are there to help you avoid major problems and give you guidance. Mentor won't write the code for you. I won't debug your code, but a mentor will say, okay, you gotta try this approach here, try that approach there, and you gotta figure it out. So yeah, I was a solo learn type of dude guy. Uh, there were no boot camps when I was there. College, there was, they did coding, but they weren't doing web design or web development, which was my specialty. Uh, but I had mentors, and I was fortunate enough I had friends of mine who were computer engineers, and so and computer science graduates. So uh, I was able to bounce ideas off of them, and I just I was able to use a bunch of disparate re resources to put together my training. But the, the mentors they come in handy. So that pretty much covers it. There's pros and cons to everything. In short, college, it's, there's a cost. It's three to four years of your life. You have to count that opportunity cost, meaning those three to four years where you're not earning, where other people are earning. Uh, but on the upside, you do get that degree which could open some doors, although less and less are the degrees becoming uh, relevant. Uh, Google put out a statement recently and said, don't go to college if you want to learn computer science. That's what Google said. That's their opinion. And Apple, Google, and other companies have done studies, and they found there was no difference in the quality of the employee, whether or not they had a degree. So keep that in mind. There's a big question. People think, oh, you go to a degree, you get a higher salary. Yes, if you go into the STEMs, right? If you go into any of the, uh, the sciences and the, the computers uh, stuff. And if you go into certain programs, yes, you make more money. But you have to ask yourself, are the people making more money because they went to college? Or are the people who go to college are just the people who make more money because they happen to work harder and more consistent? That's the question that has to be answered. I got a feeling it's a bit more of the latter, but who knows. Okay, boot camps, pros, fast, you can get some help. Um, it's not cheap necessarily, you're gonna spend five, 10, 20,000, but instead of spending three to four years, you get it done in like six months, 10 months. Shameless self-promotion, my boot camp, check it out. There might be a deal now, check it out. Um, you get all the benefits of a boot camp, all the benefits of solo learning, uh, you get the both. You get the support and everything, and it's much less expensive. Uh, but the the uh, the cons of the boot camp, the cons of the boot camp, of course, the rigid schedule. You gotta you gotta you gotta be careful. You gotta find a good boot camp from the bad ones out there. Uh, solo learn, of course, the mo least expensive, cheap as you get, maximum flexibility, no hard schedule to follow like you do with most boot camps. Uh, the cons are you're on your own. 
unless you can find independent uh, developers who are going to help you out. All right, hope this helps. Uh, if you're thinking about learning how to code, I encourage you, don't give up no matter which way you go because once you get those skills, once you understand it, it can't be taken away and then you have a super valuable skill set that will stay with you for life. All right, again, uh, shameless self-promo. Check out, I have solo learning courses. I have a boot camp mentoring program below uh, and uh, people love it. So you might too. Bye-bye.